Did you know that 30 to 50% of us at some point in life will struggle with bad breath? How do you even tell somebody they have bad breath? A friend of mine was joking that if somebody keeps offering or people offer you gum all the time at you, eh, have one. Maybe it's something that you need to think about. Over to the topic of our day, fix my bad breath. We are joined by the awesome, Harvard educated, Boston trained, <laughs> Dr. Joyce Gitango of Dental Smiles. Welcome to this conversation. Yeah, let me check my breath first. <gasps> Is that even an effective way of checking bad breath, no. by the way? Because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> first of all, you can't even trust yourself. Right. I'll tell myself, ah, nile garlic, nile kula, Yes, exactly. So that would be one. Is that a way of checking bad breath? Or it's better to tell somebody who is brave enough or your self-esteem is at 99.945% yes. level? I think most people who have bad breath know they have bad breath you can definitely smell your bad breath, mm. especially if it's severe, you know. If it's mild, maybe you can be able to get away with it, but you know, you can smell your own bad breath. Interesting. That's why most people come, they come because they're like, I know I have bad breath. And mm. I like the fact that you're saying that there are people who are coming in yes, that they Dr. know. Dr. will fix my bad breath. They know they have bad breath, yeah, they, they do, you know. Let's um, go back to the beginning because we've gone right into the middle of the conversation. Right, we've dived what in. What are the causes <laughs> of um, bad breath? So bad breath, of course, um, people think food causes bad breath. You know, food does not cause bad breath. I mean, obviously, if you chew garlic, garlic <laughs> um, you know, you chew onions, obviously, you'll have a pungent, strong smell. Temporarily? Of garlic. Yes. Um, however, you know, the main cause of bad breath is actually bacteria that's in your mouth, right? And obviously we've covered how bacteria gets in there, of course, the no brushing, the flossing, the bacteria is hidden in between your gums. And also some people don't brush their tongue, which also is a good harbor for bacteria. bacteria. So bacteria is actually caused by, I mean, the bad breath is called by, by bacteria. Mm -hmm. And what it does is combines now with the food that we eat and then they produce this, um, you know, it's more of a, a chemical reaction, reaction, but it actually produces the pungent, horrible smell. smell. Um, then, of course, we do have other causes such as, you know, um, systemic disease. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people that have gastric reflux because they're always like regurgitating their food back into their mouth. It obviously causes that bad breath. So it's more of a systemic mm -hmm. um, approach. And also, you know, if you have liver uh, disease, a lot of kidney, people with kidney disease mm -hmm. um, will have that um, bad breath, but more from a systemic um, I can be able to tell bad breath that comes from, you know, from bacteria, just bacteria the kidney liver, and systemic, more yeah, you know, they usually have different tastes, even someone with diabetes, oh, wow. you know, they have like an, a sweet, there's a sweet smell to that, um, to that breath, you know, it's not really pleasant, but there's a sweetness attached to that, you see. Um, then, of course, you know, a lot of parents will bring their kids in, oh, my child has, you know, bad breath, but we brush, you know, we brush very well mm -hmm. twice a day and floss, you know. So I always go and check their tonsils if they're inflamed or infected. And usually a lot of kids with strep throat, that would be one way to, um, to, to, to analyze if it's coming from that or from... Wait, what did you say? Strep throat, you oh, know. Uh, yeah, uh, your tonsils are... Yes, 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 yeah. So sometimes they, they're so swollen and, you know, they have bacteria inside there, so it causes that bad breath. And you know, sometimes a child is not able to tell you that. Yes, they can't tell you that because sometimes, you know, your tonsils are inflamed and swollen because they're fighting something. They're doing their job, actually doing their job really well. So, so then do you see me or do you send me to a pediatrician? Both. Um, you can do both. I mean, because we have to evaluate if it's coming from your gums all right then we do a good thorough cleaning but at the ah. moment when we're doing checks we always check your throat to make sure that your tonsils are not inflamed if you're fighting something we'll even tell you gargle with warm salty water um, sometimes you don't really need to if they're not really other you know conditions like fever right. or cough and such then i will just tell you to keep an eye on it then you can visit a doctor but usually that is the job of tonsils, the job is to fight um, things that your body is fighting. You have to allow me to say this, mm. to, to say this because, uh, you know, a lot of us pick information from Dr. Google. Right. 
and when I was researching for this particular topic, first mm. of all, I, I came to learn that the scientific term mm. of bad breath is halitosis. Right. So I feel very clever saying that. Right. <laughs> but what made me smile right. was the fact that the partners that we kiss, right. they transfer 80 million, not one, exactly. one bacteria, right. possibly 80 million bacteria yes. into our mouth, yes. with the, which then could cause bad breath. Exactly. But then how do you start walking around telling a partner, hey, I think now that we know that it, you know, it, 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 it you know, it's, it's caused by bacteria. I mean, who wants to have a bacteria in their, in their bodies, you know, mm. you know, so I think it's one of those things you can just tell your partner, you know, maybe we should schedule an appointment with um, the dentist and we can just get a cleaning, you know, like a, a family cleaning. And then when you come to the office, we tell you. We will tell you you have halitosis, and this is the reason that you have it. Um, it is nothing to be ashamed of. A lot of people are there not understanding yeah, why that yeah. they, they haven't actually, but most of them do know it's just not something very important for them. But if it's affecting the other partner, it is worth sharing. I have a random question for And you. especially for the kids too, because Absolutely. remember they are inoculating their kids with the same bacteria, yeah. you know, by hugging them, and kissing, kissing them, them, cleaning their little gadgets with their saliva. Ah, you yeah, know? yeah, 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 yeah. Well, because I'm that mum with it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, you know. Random question. Hmm. And which is, a, I believe, it's an important question because right. possibly from a professional's perspective, right. you can give us the words. We were joking with uh, my partner before, George, mm -hmm. partner meaning the guy I mm -hmm. work with on mm -hmm. this particular right. set. Right, yes. I know George's wife could be watching. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When guys are handing you pellets of uh, gum all the time. Right. But question is, how do you break it down? How can we, what are the words you can use for if, if you want to tell me, hey, Christine, your breath stinks. Right. Or should it be, hey, Christine, yeah. you need to, what can we, how can we put it into words? Um, I think just being straight with a person Ouch. because, I mean, you just don't tell them in a way that, oh my God, your breath oh, stinks. But, you know, oh. just do it in a more compassionate um, and in a way that we can heal this together. Yeah. Because um, if, if you are going to break it down as if, um, you know, I've noticed that, you know, you, you know there's a certain breath uh, that's coming and, you know, I read somewhere that it's caused by bacteria, you know, and it might not be, you, it, it might be not, something it, yes, it could be bacteria, it could yeah. be other issues yeah. that are hidden. You know, do you want us, we go see a dentist and see if, you know, they, they could come up with something. And then, you know, from there we can take on, but I think it's something that I think it's for the good of all. And especially if they're little kids um, in that home, because you don't want to inoculate them no. with that bacteria and then, you know, transfer your disease into into your children. Good point. Yeah. The yeah. other one is obviously um, people who have dry mouth. And ah, so dry mouth could be yes, a cause of bad Because, breath. yeah, saliva, you know, when you have saliva, there are uh, things in the saliva that keeps your mouth um, clean. <clears throat> there are a lot of antimicrobial properties in there. So if you have dry mouth and then you have bacteria in there, then it's not able to fight all that bacteria in your mouth, right? Um, we have to find a way to stimulate it. So a lot of people who are taking certain medications mm -hmm. um, or going through certain cancer treatments right. or radiation or even children who are mouth breathers, you know, um, you know, it, it causes that dry mouth and then they always have this breath. So some of those things we just, you know, if it's something that is drug induced, yeah. um, then we can't tell you no, stop taking you your medication. But there are things that stimulate the flow of saliva. Even simple things like chewing gum, it helps to stimulate the flow of saliva. If it's children who have uh, who are mouth breathers, mm -hmm. we do have appliances that we do recommend um, for you know for the kids um, to help them um, stop the habit right. um, or refer them to a ear, nose, and throat uh, a doctor. Especially so that we can find out if there are other underlying issues causing the mouth breathing. Right. So, like we said, your mouth is the gateway to to my health, to your health. So, even with small things like your breath, mm -hmm. we can catch diabetes. Yeah. We can catch liver, kidney, of course, just general, you know, dental disease. 
we can catch certain habits like the mouth breathers mm -hmm. you know we can help people who are going through certain treatments um, have you know better flow of saliva yeah so it is quite an important thing to know that everything you will end up having to come to see the dentist because everything that you have and own in your body comes through your mouth and it's very important for you to understand there's a connection to mm. everything awesome right as we wind up this conversation breaking it down for us the solutions or the remedies right for bad breath we've talked about when it comes to dry mouth mm -hmm. a dry mouth looking for things that will then stimulate saliva right you've talked about chewing gum yes but speaking of chewing gum which yes. is the right chewing gum to be looking at of course a sugar free right there are a lot of sugar free yes um there are brands out there that have like high but most chewing gums that are sugar free will always say sugar free or sh sugarless ah. you know gum so you want to stick to those brands but most sugar importantly the way to prevent bad breath at home at home right again brushing twice, twice a day, a day Flossing the right way once a day once a day and coming to the dentist for a professional clean So we can remove all that bacteria that's been tucked in in those areas that you cannot reach with your months. toothbrush and mm -hmm. your floss twice a year Yes, and of course also I mean we've had all people who are using mouth rinses It helps to reduce the antimicrobial um, load in your mouth, but just remember it is just masking the order. So it doesn't sort it out does the not problem. sort out. So if you go run to the pharmacy and get a bottle of mouth rinse thinking it's gonna end your mm -hmm. halitosis, it problem. will not. It's just masking it. So most importantly is brushing, flossing, seeing your dentist regularly. If you have other issues that are causing the dry mouth, then we you know use things like uh, mouth stimulants like they are, we've talked about the, the chewing gum the eating? there are even medications Is you know it? when it's really bad there are medications that help to stimulate uh, saliva mm -hmm. um, so that you don't end up having even things like decay because when you have dry mouth it can also cause decay and gum disease so when it gets to that extent then you know if the chewing gum does not stimulate then we of course introduce medications yeah awesome mm. so again 30 to 50% of us will struggle with bad breath at some, at some point in our right. lives. Not something we should be ashamed about. We need to find a way to compassionately break it down to somebody who could be suffering. But it's important to know that we can prevent it. Right. And it's important to come in and see a dentist, yes. like you said, not less than at least twice a year. Right. And then do the right thing. Exactly. Brush twice a day, mm. floss the right way, and all the other things that she has said. Yes. So thank you so much for yes. reminding us things that... I, but I know there's somebody who's learned a thing or two yes. beyond the number uh -huh. brushing and yes. all that. Yeah, yeah, and uh -huh. your choice of partner as well. Yes, <laughs> yes. very important. To break it down to them because yeah. you could be working on your on your breath, but then every time you your health is event, important. Your yeah. health is important. So if their health is not in check, then it affects your your overall health too. Uh, absolutely, yeah. the mouth is the gateway to our health. Yes. And on that note, we need to come to an end. Yes. I will let you say one final punch. Yes. Be proud of your mouth. I love that. Right. I love that. Be proud of your mouth. Yes. Be proud <laughs> of your mouth. Yes. Yeah. See you in the next episode. And thank you for joining in. Right.